Welcome back to White Coat Medicine Talks. This is Dr. David Cruz, and welcome back to part two of dementia. We know that there are many types of dementia, and we mentioned in our first video Alzheimer's dementia, and we also mentioned a multi infarct or vascular dementia, where your arteries are getting clogged up, and little by little you start getting more little strokes or little areas that don't receive blood supply, and by the time you know it, you develop dementia or you can have a big stroke and have dementia from that. However, we want to talk today about some of the medications that are out that are approved by the FDA. We know at this time there is no cure for dementia, but the studies continue to be ongoing and hopefully uh, within some time in the future we'll have some better answers and better treatments. I'm going to try to explain the mechanism of action of these medications. I think throughout all the videos that we do, we're going to try to always explain the mechanism of action of some of these medications because the more you know about how they work, the better treatment you'll have. Uh, before we can do that, I think we need to understand what the brain is all about. You know, the brain is just a bunch of neurons together and they're talking and communicating back to each other, back and forth, back and forth. They communicate everything about us. They help us with our memory, they help us with arousal, they help us with learning, they help us with sleeping, they help us with everything, the movements we do. And you know, the way these neurons communicate is through little chemicals called neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters are released from one uh, in one neuron, they go to the other neuron, and that's the way they communicate. So some of the medications that are out now <coughs> are working in that area there. There is in our brain, as well as in our bodies, but in our brain we have a chemical called acetylcholine, and this is one of the neurons. This is a neurotransmitter that goes from one neuron to another. And what they do, it, it helps us with arousal, it helps us with learning, uh, it kind of helps us with a lot of the different things that, that go on in the brain. So we want to try to keep this neurotransmitter around a long time. Now if we have less of the neurotransmitter, then we may have less arousal, less attention, less learning. And so these drugs that I'm going to mention first of all, help in this area. They want to keep this chemical around, they want to keep this neurotransmitter around so that it works better in the brain. Now acetylcholine is broken down by acetylcholinesterase. So these medications are going to block acetylcholinesterase. So you block acetylcholinesterase and now you have more of the chemical to go back and forth between your neurons and that's going to be helping people be more arousable and more alert and maybe learn more and those people will do better with these medications. So there's about four medications right now. There's Aricept, there is um, I believe Cognex, there is Exelon and Razadine or Razadine. Those are the four that are out right now at this time. There's more being studied within that same group <coughs> but these are the four that are around at this time. So there is one other medication that works a little bit different. This other medication is called Namenda. Namenda works by a different mechanism. Now your cells have many receptors on them <coughs> and these receptors help with uh, the cells functioning daily activities. So one of the, some of the cells allow calcium to come into the cell. Now, it normally you need calcium in your cells so that they can function and work better, but occasionally you may have cells that have too much calcium coming into them, and if you have too much calcium in a cell, that cell may die. And so then you're going to start having your neurons or your brain cells start dying if there's too much calcium coming in. That's where Namenda works. It will attach to one of the receptors and kind of stop some of the calcium from going in and therefore limiting that calcium from going in will help the cell live longer. Because of the mechanisms of action and because they're different mechanisms of action, you can actually combine these two different types of medication. And in fact, they do make one medication that has Aricept and Namenda with it. And some of the patients may be on that medication. So some of the things that we have to look out for is the side effects from these medications. And they can vary from diarrhea to headaches, 
to worsening of your condition, possibly more confused. Uh, there could be insomnia, more fatigue, and people sleeping more. And sometimes it can get to the point that are very fatigued and very, very hard to arouse and to lift up and to walk around. Sometimes these medications may not be able to be taken by the patients. But when you look at these medications, they're very useful, they're helpful, but they're not a cure. And so what we want to focus on is how do we make our cells live longer? Now, if you remember from our first video, we did talk about the mitochondria and the mitochondria producing all the energy for your cells. And the longer we make the mitochondria live and the easier we make it to produce more energy, the more cells are going to have energy to work and live longer. And then we also talked about the, um, the amyloid precursor protein as well. And the amyloid precursor protein is the one that we talked about where we can break it down in one level and it'll make your nerve cells grow and make more connections or if we break it down in a different level and that's going to cause your cells to die. So there are medications that are being worked at that level as well to try to make these uh, nerve cells live longer. What we're going to do in our next videos, we're going to talk about some of the vitamins that have been studied and some of the proposed mechanisms of action that they might be helping the brain. Now remember, there is no cure, but hopefully with more education and learning about some of these uh, vitamins and minerals that are out there, maybe we can help a patient do better, live longer, and have a better memory for a longer period of time, and being more functional for a longer period of time, which then at the same time will help the family members uh, live a little bit more comfortable and more at peace that their family member is doing better. Now talk to your doctor about all these things that we're talking about and as the videos go on hopefully we'll we'll learn more about all these things. This is Dr. David Cruz for White Coat Medicine Talks and we'll see you in part three of our talks on dementia. Have a great day.